So this is known as 10,000 hours and you. If you learned anything today, this will probably be the main lesson that I want you guys to really pay attention to because I think it's pretty cool, it's very important. Uh, there is this guy, his name is Malcolm Gladwell, and he wrote this, this story. He wrote this book about 10,000 hours. So basically what he did is he, he's a very smart guy, and he researched successful you know, companies and people, mostly people actually. And he said that in order for you to be successful at what you do, you must devote at least 10,000 hours to it. I'm going to repeat. He said, now there are many people that argue with him and say no, that that's not true. But he's like, listen, I'm just doing my research and I'm telling you what my research is telling me based on the people I spoke with, based on my research. And this is what I found out that in order for you to be very good at what you do and to find some level of success, you need to invest 10,000 hours, maybe a little bit more, but at least 10,000 was like the magic number. So he uh, wrote this book, it's called Outliers. Now, outliers is a, is a confusing word because you might think that, oh, they're lying. It's, it has nothing to do with lying. Outliers basically means something or somebody that stands away from the crowd mostly in a positive sense, not in a negative sense, okay? That means if you look at even uh, fashion designers, you see fashion designers, even in the group of fashion designers, there are some designers that stand very far apart from all the other designers. I'm talking about even the top best of the best designers, you will see always there are some designer brands that stand separately, okay? Now, for example, let's, let's go to a different example. If you look at this, this car, this is a Toyota a hybrid uh, car. Looks really nice. That's known as gunmetal. The color of the paint is known as gunmetal. And it's a, it's a pretty, you know, it's a pretty nice car. Now, let's take a look at this one. This is an Audi. Again, uh, you know, accidentally, it just has to happen to be... Uh, uh, gun metal I wasn't choosing I just thought it was a very nice designed uh, Audi uh, car which is actually a very nice car now let's take a look at this this is a Rolls-Royce Phantom now you see all three were cars but this one stood very very separately from the other two now that is the meaning of outlier that is the meaning of outlier. That means in a group, in a, in a crowd, always somebody is going to stand very different from everybody else. That's the meaning of outlier. Okay, now let's look at a typical working scenario. Okay, a typical working scenario because this has to do with 10,000 hours, correct? So let's look at a typical a working scenario. If you work from 9 o'clock in the morning till 5 o'clock in the evening, that's basically eight hours, and Monday through Friday, uh, that would be 40 hours a week. That would be your typical. Everybody kind of works this typical time slot, okay? Now, there are people who work even more than that, of course, but I'm just talking about on an average. If you look at it on an average, people actually work in this kind of scenario, in 40 hours a week scenario. Now, let's say you work 60 hours a week. Maybe you work 20 hours over the weekend and all that stuff, okay? So let's assume that you work 60 hours a week. That is 52 weeks in a year. That would be around, you know, north of 3,000 hours. So 10,000 hours divided by the 3,000 hours, this comes about a little bit more than three years. It just comes a little bit around three years. So the magic number based on Mr. Gladwell's research was three years. He basically said that any, anybody who is actually very successful, they probably started three years ago, maybe even longer, but, but three years seems to be the magic number that seems to be going across everywhere. Three to four years, you know, uh, roughly, um, he, that's what he says, but, but they titled it as 10,000 hours because, you know, just to make it 
interesting instead of saying 10,500 hours or something like that. But average basically it was three years, 10,000 hours. So he said that, so if you are working very hard and you focus yourself very nicely, very sharpishly for three years or a little bit more than three years, you could be beginning your success. It's a guarantee. Okay, it's a guarantee. That, that there is no way you can actually fail. It's a guarantee. Now, now let's talk about what I found out because I was doing uh, my own little research for my uh, uh, fashion classes and even for my own edification actually. I just wanted to know uh, was this guy really saying something interesting and this is what I found out. In terms of stores, in terms of shops, okay, Ralph Lauren, he began selling ties in 1967. This is what his biography says. But his first shop, the Ralph Lauren shop that was opened was in 1971. Okay, so that's about four years. Let's take a look at Calvin Klein. Began in 1968 and his first collection was mostly clothes selling to Bon with Teller which is a which is like a great marketing story now and uh, you can read it online by the way but his first shop he opened it you know his own shop okay his own shop was only in 1905 however in 1972 he already had shops inside other shops like the Calvin Klein shops inside department stores now I want to explain that a little bit is when you are actually doing stores, you could make your own store, but you could also make a store inside another person's store. You just have to pay them a certain fee for doing that. And that's a different lesson, which I'll explain to you guys about department stores, okay? But Calvin Klein stores opened up in 1972. So he started in 68, and in 72, his first Calvin Klein stores were open. Before he had his own store as a separate on uh, Madison Avenue, which is now closed by the way, they closed it because uh, the Calvin Klein business is sold to another company so they closed the store. But when he op before he opened that store, it was in 72. So again, three to four years. You see, you, you see this thing, it's, it's going along with this 10,000 hour stuff. Now Chanel is a little bit different because Chanel when she first started out, she began in 1909, that's what they're saying, but she started out in 1910 with a shop of her own, that, like the Chanel shop. But she wasn't selling couture clothing, she was selling hats. She started out first with selling hats and then she started selling some articles of clothes and then that's how she built it. But her biography basically says that her career actually started about four years earlier. Even though she, they openly say that in 1909 is when Chanel became Chanel and all that, all that stuff. But actually she started working much earlier than that obviously. And that was going back three to four years. Yves Saint Laurent began in 1961. But his first parish shop was in 1966. Again, about four or five years. So, what I'm trying to tell you guys about this lesson is even in fashion it seems that the success rate or it seems how you actually go from where you are today to becoming somebody of some success is also going to be within this three, four and five years. Now it may take you even 10 years to do it. You might be lucky and do it in one year. It's, it's, you know, luck has a lot to do with, with those kind of numbers, of course. However, if you work hard right now, today, guaranteed in two, three, four years time, which is not too far away, by the way, it's, it's, it's not too far away at all, especially for you at your age, is you would be able to find the beginnings of your success, which is very inspiring which I think you guys should take this very seriously because if this is true and I have just shown you some dates which you can research on your own by the way and Maxwell 
uh, Gladwell, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, I'm sorry, uh, is a very respected journalist and a researcher and an author in the United States. And his research is very intensive. He also works for the Washington Post, which is a very big deal. He also works for New York Times, which is also a very big deal. And if he says that this is the amount of hours that you need, uh, there is something in it that we should actually pay attention to. Okay? Now, it also says that during these years, the hardest work was performed by these individuals who later on became outliers. That means the people who actually became these individuals who stood far apart from the crowd. Talent, practice, long hours, good notes and record keeping, that means library work, and good work practices. I want to repeat that. Talent, practice, long hours, good notes, remember your design journal that you're doing for me, okay? Good notes and record keeping, which is means the library. That means you keep all your work properly one side. You don't keep it digitally, you keep it physically and make sure that you protect it and you don't throw water on it and you don't destroy it, please, okay? And good work practices, meaning you have some kind of schedule that you give yourself to work towards your dreams and you can get those dreams come true for you guys. Now, even if you look at companies, and I have worked in many companies, a lot of companies have three-year plans, three-year marketing plans, three-year advertising plans, three-year company plans, like where the company is going in three years time, what are the goals and aspirations for the company, what level to reach financially, uh, you know, emotionally, where does the company go direct in, in any kind of direction. They usually tend to have this three-year number in their plans. Many colleges also have three years, of course they also have two years, but they also mostly have three year and four year degree plans. So it seems this 10,000 hours has this very, very interesting uh, a thought process that we should be thinking about because if we actually look at it, I think we can really get our success rate to go higher if we follow these rules, okay? So the moral of this lesson I said is please take your time seriously and uh, take down good notes. Your design journal is probably one of your most incredible, valuable asset. So please make sure you actually take down good notes and keep your notes safe. Uh, don't share it with everybody, so to speak. It may be your secret, right? Maybe it's your secret sauce, how you actually do things for you to make your business, your brand, your design capabilities better than everybody else and you'll be successful. Thank you. See you in the next lesson.